Good morning. Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship this Sunday morning as we gather together to hear God's word and to gather around this precious and life-giving sacrament. It is a joy and a blessing to be together as it is every Sunday. And as we come forward for Holy Communion, all baptized Christians believing Christ's presence in the sacrament are more than welcome to communion. So friends, as we begin this time of worship here with one another, I would invite you now to rise for confession and absolution as is printed in the green pamphlet. We are here gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And friends, let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and in the presence of one another. We pray together. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, our God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to join in the singing of our gathering hymn, hymn number 611 in the Red Hymn. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. 
Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord. understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it, for I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the eleventh chapter. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all, that you, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, 
For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of Jesus, Amen. In this Sunday of the church year, we are celebrating the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. And we're given an odd gospel reading, which feels appropriate seeing as it's my last Sunday preaching for all of you. Why would the lectionary give us an easy reading? It's odd, isn't it, what we just heard read to us? The lectionary begins our reading halfway through a discourse about John the Baptist. Remember, we eulogized John the Baptist on the 25th of June, a day after the celebration of his nativity. John represents for us the life of the church, both its internal struggle against sin, which clings to our habits and lives, as well as the external struggle that the church feels with the world around it. John is the Elijah who is to come, sometimes represented in iconography with angelic wings because he is in his being the messenger who points away from himself and towards the Christ. He is the fullness of the Old Testament witness as a witness to the mystery of God incarnate, and he is a picture of the church who witnesses this mystery come to fruition at the end of the age. In John, we see the epitome of the Christian life, for John's fundamental intuition is that he lives his life only for the sake of Christ, only to say, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, that Christ must increase and John must decrease. So our passage begins abruptly in Jesus' discourse about John the Baptist, the greatest among those born of women. Jesus says that the generation that John preached to can be compared to children playing in the marketplace. He says, but to what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played the, fruit, the flute for you, but you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. That is, they're like children who play wedding and funeral and who scorn others who do not join in their childish games. They thought that John would conform to their expectations, but because he practiced austerities, they vainly said he had a demon. And Jesus says they expected himself to play along too, but because he came eating and drinking, they said he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of low society. What they expected and what they got were two different things. Like children, they knew how a wedding or a funeral was supposed to be played out, the friend of the bridegroom is supposed to be making merry, not practicing austerities out in the desert. And the soon-to-be dead man for a funeral, the Lamb of God, is supposed to be gloomy, not eating and drinking with sinners and tax collectors. The crowds thought that they were wise. They thought they knew how to judge between a Messiah and a faker. And they counted both Jesus and John as inauthentic prophets from the backwaters of Israel. But Jesus draws on uh, the tradition of Old Testament wisdom literature and simply rebukes the crowds for their superficial understanding. Wisdom is vindicated by her children, he says, in a well-attested alternative manuscript tradition. True wisdom, both heavenly and its earthly reflection, has been hidden from the wise and intelligent of this world, Jesus says, it is hidden, but now it must be revealed through wisdom's children. This first refers to the blessed St. John the Baptist. True creaturely wisdom is demonstrated in St. John the Baptist, whom the crowds thought had a demon. For John is indeed the true friend of the bridegroom who meets him before the wedding ceremony. John meets Jesus according to the best of all authentic human wisdom and creaturely insight, and he says, I must decrease and 
you must increase. The epitome of human wisdom, according to the scriptures, is to recognize that human strength cannot reach up to the divine, that all human striving and human effort can accomplish is this, to say, I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. Who am I that the Lord should come to me to be baptized? Like the Blessed Virgin Mary, the best the creature can offer is this, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, let it be unto me as you have said. This is to be a true friend of the bridegroom, a best man who prepares all things well for the wedding feast. And this creaturely wisdom is wise because it participates in something beyond itself. It is wise because it is a mirror, a reflection, a receptacle of heavenly wisdom. For heavenly wisdom is just as constituted by self-emptying, self-giving love, and seeks to give herself to that which is like her. Though in her nature higher than all the sons of men, the firstborn of all creation, a heavenly Sophia, the wisdom of the divine nature, the Father sent the Son to bring divine wisdom to the lowest of the low. And this is what the crowds miss. Wisdom is vindicated in her child, the divine Christ. It is actually in accordance with her own nature when Christ eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners. For wisdom is nothing but the divine outpouring of the Father's love. She comes through a certain sort of pedagogy or system of teaching. She makes herself inscrutable behind the Son's flesh and low stature. She accommodates herself to the fallen state of humanity in order to bring them back into the divine life, in order to rehabilitate them to herself. According to her garb was wisdom received. She looked lowly and unassuming, so she was able to be received by all who were empty infants, our texts tell us, the weak and childish, those of us who cannot gaze at wisdom, cannot gaze at the divine nature in its full glory and might. Jesus is making this point. Real wisdom, earthly and heavenly, is constituted not by knowing the nature of things or what is proper. True wisdom is this, giving yourself for those around you. This is how you prepare for the wedding feast. This is the substance of the funeral. This is how you prepare for Jesus' death and resurrection, where the wisdom of God and man met with a kiss, where the God-man, the bridegroom and the lamb, gave himself for the sake of the world to unify it once more to God. This is the will of God, our reading says, that wisdom would be made to look like foolishness, that wisdom would take on the lowliness of those whom she wished to raise up, so that being accepted by the lowly, she might divinize them. She is not known through arrogance or pride or strength. Instead, wisdom is known only in love, in the giving of self, in the deeds of charity, in her children. Jesus ends the reading with a simple request. Come. He reiterates the cry of wisdom in the first chapter of Proverbs, come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy, carrying heavy burdens, he says. Come to me, all you who are lowly and broken and forgotten in the eyes of the world. Come to me, all you who are infants and children, and I will give you fullness of life. For I myself am gentle and humble, just like you, he says. I am according to you, I am like you. And for this reason, that I may, might make you more like me. This is the cry of wisdom on the streets. This is the heavenly 
Sophia, calling to creaturely wisdom, God calling all his children home. One question, before, though, before we conclude, about which we might speculate. What do we do with the crowds? Does Christ's calling exclude the childish crowds? Remember the crowds play wedding and funeral and do not recognize the forerunner or the Messiah, the friend of the bridegroom or the Lamb of God. It would be tempting to say that Christ has rejected them, that they are left behind because of their ignorance. Because they think they're wise, Christ simply leaves them to be fools. But I don't think that this is the case. Of course, the crowds are foolish. They are like children, our Lord says. But wisdom herself has become childlike. And so she corresponds to us infants and to the childlike crowds, to both of us alike. Heavenly wisdom, Sophia, loves to perfect, unify, and reconcile all things, just as Jesus, the incarnation of heavenly wisdom, says in our text, all things have been heart handed over to me by the Father. The boundaries of God's love are simply that she has no boundaries. Instead, that love is a glorious and joyous fullness, which constantly exceeds the boundaries by which we attempt to stem the tide. In this, we see an indication, a mysterious intuition, that the fires of divine love will so take hold of the crowds who did not recognize the wisdom of God at work. The day of judgment and crisis will so consume them that wisdom will make something beautiful out of them, too. That she will find her reflection, the image of the divine nature, in them, too. And as one human mass, all things shall become transparent unto her divine rays, for all things will be engulfed by the one love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May this wisdom of God, made known to you in the humility of Christ, be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for Christ's holy Church, for the nations of the world, and for the needs of our brothers and sisters throughout creation. For the church, that she might always seek the wisdom which is from above and spurn all false wisdoms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all bishops, pastors, deacons, teachers, and parents, 
that they might always live lives in accordance with what is true, right, and beautiful. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those in positions of leadership and responsibility, that they might always protect and care for those in their care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all people, that through the work of the Spirit and the Church, they might be gathered into God the Father's loving embrace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who are battling illness and limitation, that they might find healing and wholeness in the shadow of Jesus' cross. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they might be granted eternal rest, and that those who mourn for them here might receive comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment to share that peace. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection Open to us the way of everlasting life. 
And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> God, you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is alive, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin, we may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all of your saints. For to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper.
to receive you. But when I speak the word, and I shall be healed. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor. Bring you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sunday morning. Um, we've had a wonderful year together with Vicar Ben. He's our, you're the 38th vicar, correct? Um, he's the 38th vicar in Trinity's history, so we have a long line and tradition of, of hosting vicars. Uh, and it was wonderful after a few years to get back into that process this year. And we've certainly been blessed and, and got off to a very good start with Vicar Ben. And so uh, as today is his final Sunday among us, if you're able to come back at 11 a.m., down in Trinity Hall, we have a light reception. We'll present a gift on behalf of the congregation. Uh, and then we'll wish he and Elizabeth well as they uh, pack up their car and, and head off into, into Pittsburgh and look towards a wedding in just a couple weeks. Uh, so if you're able to be back with us at 11 a.m. down in Trinity Hall, there'll be some cake and goodies and, and some wonderful time to reflect and give thanks for a good year together. 
As we move into the week ahead, uh, we also have a few summer activities going on. This Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the Parish House, our book club will be gathering together. There's still a sign-up down there for that. And Wednesday is our summer all-parish scavenger hunt. So it's about the middle of the summer, and it's time to get together. We'll have our marching orders. I'm not sure quite the area. It'll be somewhere right here around town. We'll have about an hour to go and try and find uh, a bunch of mystery items. We'll come back, see who won. There'll be prizes. And then regardless of whether you're a good scavenger hunter or not, you will get ice cream at the end of that. So that's this Wednesday at 6 p.m. in Trinity Hall. We'll gather together. But there's a sign-up sheet down in Trinity Hall that lets us prep all of the materials and ice cream and everything uh, for all those who we're expecting. So if you have time, come and join us. It really is a, a wonderful and fun way to kind of hit the midpoint of the summer. Any other announcements for the good, good of the community? Okay. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you.